What's up everyone, welcome back to the Hardcore Fab Shop. On today's video, we're gonna continue the talk on what I've got here in the shop for working with tube. So we've already covered my tubing notcher, we've already covered the tubing roller back there on the table, and now we've got here my tubing bender. This is a JD squared model 52 bender, and it is a hydraulic unit, it's an air over hydraulic unit, and it also, the coolest feature about it, has a digital readout to let us know exactly where we're at when we're bending tube. All right, so like I said, it is a JD squared model 52. I don't think they actually sell this model anymore, but uh, they have one that's a pretty similar model to this that's just a little bit newer upgraded version. I've got mine equipped with an inch and three quarter die. That's what I've got in here all the time because I usually only do roll cage stuff for razors, off-road stuff, things like that. So it's always inch and three quarter. Like I said, it is a hydraulic powered unit. So we're not having to sit here and pull on a big handle and everything and try to get everything dialed in that way. So we've got full control with hydraulics and the hydraulics are powered by, you can see the hose going down here to this foot valve here and it's an air over hydraulic unit. So it just plugs right into our air compressor to be able to power this thing. So you can see obviously that it's not on a factory JD squared base. At the time when I bought this, they offered the base separately as an upgraded option. And I think it was around five or $600 for the base. It's a beautiful powder coated orange look awesome here in the shop type piece. But at the time I was doing good to be able to scrounge up enough money to actually be able to buy the bender and a die. So I had to opt out of the base and I just made my own. So that's what it's been sitting on pretty much ever since. I figured as soon as I got done with the job that I bought it for in the first place to be able to have and use that I would send this piece here off, get powder coated, maybe add a little bit more flare stuff to it to make it look a little nicer. And now it's been like 10 years and here it is. So you guys know how that plays out. So anyways, that is the bender. And we've also, like I said, got a digital part here on there. So let me go ahead and plug this thing in. You can see the digital readout part of it. I'll get some air hook to it and we'll go ahead and throw some tube in here and start bending it for the rest of our cage back here on the razor buggy. All right, so for power, we're just using a regular 110 plug in there. I've got it plugged into a power strip and then it's just got this part here that's electric, so it's got a really small little wire there. And I was worried that this, trying to hang out here and plug into something like my extension cord there, might get damaged. So I added the power strip just to be on the safe side there. So this part, like I said, is the only part that's actually digital and electric. So the rest of it is gonna be air. So to clear this thing, you just do two fingers. That clears it. And then you can push zero at any point and zero it out. All right, so before I can bend any tube, I need to actually go ahead and get this thing truly zeroed out over here on the gauge. So I'm going to set me up a piece of tubing in here. And we want to run this down to where it's pretty tight. I don't usually crank on it with a wrench, but if it's good enough by hand, it'll be fine. So I'll go with that. Now I've got trains and helicopters coming by, I guess. So hopefully you guys will be able to hear this. But I bring this in here and flip that over like that. And now we're locked in. Get a little pressure on this tube here. So I pushed on this enough to where it's just good and tight here. All the slop is now out of our die setup and everything. So we're pretty tight here, but we're not bending it yet. We don't want to bend anything yet because we want to set it at zero before we actually bend something. So now if we use this without unplugging it or shutting it off, anytime that we put any of our bars in here that we're getting ready to do on our buggy over here, as long as we don't shut this off, they're going to have the same zero here. So if I run them all to the same number here on that gauge, when I'm bending them, they will be a consistent bend. So it's very important that you keep that in mind. If I was to only do one side of the buggy and then unplug it and come back another day and do it again, I can actually have a difference of at least one or so degrees in there, depending on how tight I make this and set this up and where I set zero. So that's a pretty important thing to keep in mind. 
I need some short little bends in my cage. So I'm going to go ahead and bend this tube right here for you guys so you can see kind of how this action right here all works with the cylinder and the hydraulics and everything. Wow. Oh, I got distracted by videoing. Usually I put a little WD on my dies so they slide through there a little better. All right, so I'm out of material over here. You can see I don't have any more tube left. It'll hang out of the holder there. So that's as far as I can go with this bend. So this bend I got to 78.8 degrees. Now I do have a die here that will actually allow us to go do a full 180 if I had more material, of course. So the way that works though, you can see this cylinder is almost maxed out. It'll end up going like 105 or something like that. But if I release the pressure off of it, you see down in here, this hub that's inside here has some grooves that this finger comes into and it connects in and pushes. There is four of those in there. So yeah, we don't have quite enough tube in there now. It would go back in and actually catch another one if we had more tube in here and then it would grab and it would go and do, you know, all the way around and make our 180. But I don't have the material here, so we're not going to do that right now. It also has a little catch over here on the side that you can pull down and that'll release and that'll hold the die and keep the die from wanting to spin backwards when you've got pressure on it. All right, so I can back it up. Oh, there is a little lever here that you can hold and allows you to freewheel that. So now you guys can see that it actually did a really nice job of putting that 70 degree bend in our tube. actually bend our tube now that we have rolled with our tubing roller and get our a pillar and our top roof bar in here on our buggy Well guys, there you go. That is a finished bar right there. I love the look of this thing sitting here in place after we've done rolled it and bent it with our JD squared bender. So I think the combination of the two go together quite well and it actually gives it a really nice look. We got the other side already all done too, as you can see there as well. So we're well on our way here to having this thing close to being done with tube work. So if you guys are interested in seeing how it turns out and what it looks like when it's all said and done, I will put you guys a link to the playlist up here above to the No Regrets RZR Buggy Build. That's what this is right here. And um, also, I guess I need to give you guys a link to the tubing roller in case you haven't seen that video yet. So we'll put that up here now. And what else do we got? Um, oh, I wish to give you guys a link to some JD squared tubing vendors and I'll do that in the description down below. I'll give you guys the model that they have now available that's similar to mine. They do also have some cheaper models down there as well, so I'll try to put you some links to some of those too. And honestly, for somebody that's only going to do you know one or two of these or not bend much tube, then it really makes a lot more sense to probably have one of the cheaper versions. And they work quite well, and they're really good too, but they just don't have the digital readout and some of the things that this one has that makes it a little bit better. So, but still perfectly good units so like i said description down below i'll have you some links to that stuff so you guys can go find some of that and i guess with that that's about all i got for you guys on today's video we'll see you guys on the next one